hello and welcome. Welcome to Yoga Solutions with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. Um, yes, today I would like to talk about the breath and its role in posture work. Yeah, um, it's a tricky subject and, and it's, it's full of all sorts of nuances and, and um, well, precision really. And, uh, and yeah, it's quite often why the breath is thought of as an advanced practice that you do separately from your physical practice. And, but the, uh, to me, the idea of um, not attending to the breath whilst you're, um, whilst you're trying to work out how to support yourself in space, doing a posture, it, it's a bit of a ridiculous thing to ignore because if you can't um, comfortably breathe, it's, it, it's a sign that you're not supported in an appropriate way for the posture. So, it, um, so for me, incorporating uh, breathing practices of sorts or an understanding of the breath is an important thing to do. And, and essentially, if I wanted to give you a, a two second instruction that would change your yoga practice for life, is instead of trying to breathe whilst doing things, try and breathe what you're doing. That, that will give you everything you need to know if you can follow that instruction. Um, yeah, following that idea is, is a tricky thing. It takes practice. And if you're used to the normal way of doing yoga, it, it won't be an easy thing to find um, the, the real meaning of it. But um, that's it. If you can breathe what you're doing, then there's a chance that you've set yourself up to let go into what you're doing, which is the experience that we're all looking for, that, that freedom, that uh, freedom to expand and, and move without restriction. So, um, yeah, so it's a big subject. And, um, but what I'd like to do is just to give you a direct experimental uh, thing to play with, just to, just to see how it works, okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll do it with a sim the simplest of pranayamas um, that anyone can do without really knowing too much detail. So, um, yeah, the pranayama I want to involve you in is a... It, it, there, there's a few versions of it. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll call it... Uh, bastrika. Uh, there's there's, um, there's bastrika. There's fire breath. There's, there's all sorts of um, variations on on these kind of well, they're really kriya breaths, uh, but um, uh, forcible exhales that kind of clean clean out the system. But they also have a a secondary function of getting your breathing to be involved with how you support yourself. And I'm not talking about how you hold yourself together. I'm talking about how you relate to the ground, how, how you relate to support and how you relate to what you're doing. And um, yeah, Bastrika, uh, otherwise known as, um, well, I call it the laughing breath because uh, it's, it's, it's the description of the best version of Bastrika you can do. But essentially, it's, it's um, simply puffing the breath out using your belly muscles. <clears throat> and um, yes, I won't get too accurate with it. D just try it with me now for a moment as you're sitting. It's important that you can relax your weight first. So you can be as collapsed as you like and just chilled out in your seated position. Um, take a breath. Let it go with a sigh. <sighs> and towards the end of that, I want you to start uh, pumping the breath pull by pulling your belly back. And if you remain relaxed in your spine, then the pumping of the breath will throw you around in space, uh, provided you're not, you know, holding yourself somewhere. So it might look something like this. So I, I was making a, a sort of an O sound with my mouth. It, it sort of goes with the thing that you're doing. You don't have to have your mouth open. You can do it with your mouth closed and do it with, um, and puff it out through your nose, which might be nicer if uh, doing it with your mouth open leads to a dry throat. So 
have another go start it off with um uh, a kind of feeling and then close the mouth and continue it and then the, then when you've got the rhythm of the thing going and your body's not resisting the movements that the forced breath is creating i want you to breathe all the way out using the belly muscle and that extended exhale can last a reasonable time you know you you, you don't push it you don't you don't push yourself but you allow the full emptying of the breath over the time that it takes to do so okay so uh one more go let's turn to the right make sure you're relaxing your weight down as you do it you can do it with mouth open mouth closed whatever but it's a forcible effort in your in your belly to exhale the inhale some people um uh, work to breathe in as well. You don't really need to do that. Um, so it's, the emphasis is on the exhale for now. <clears throat> and what you might notice is that the um, the final exhale, where you're emptying yourself fully out, even though you're um, using your belly muscles to empty that bed, that breath you might have noticed that there's a sort of a passive uplift that occurs with the ongoing emptying of the breath let's try it on the other side And, then, and the uplift will occur towards the end of the um, released breath. And the reason for that is um, your rib cage gets involved with emptying out. And because you've got core support, the rib cage emptying leads to an open an extension of the thoracic spine. So you, that's where you get a bit taller, a bit, a bit more up uh, as a result of breathing out, which is an unusual experience for people. And uh, that was why I insisted that you made sure you weren't holding yourself in space while she did that practice. Now, <clears throat> let's put it into a posture. So if we just have a go at dog pose. Um, do your, if you're doing your normal dog pose first, just to see what it feels like. Um, uh, yeah, just have a go. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a moment to try that because uh, I want you to have something to compare it to so um you know most people will push the ground away and pull their legs straight and all sorts of things but just do it any way you like and then come out and then we can have another go okay so i yeah, gave you enough time to just see what it felt like and uh this time i'd like you to uh arrive on all fours but completely collapse in the posture which uh for most people that will involve the the belly kind of falling towards the ground other people when they collapse it will be a sort of a rounded thing that relies on tension in the pelvis and buttocks and hamstrings doesn't matter what it is but whatever the the thing i want you to not be doing is pushing the ground away okay so whatever weird shape uh, uncomfortable shape appears when you completely relax your weight take a breath let it go with a sigh and then begin and if you actively pull your navel back with the release of the breath uh, forcibly that should move you not because you're tilting your pelvis but simply because the belly moves back and the breath is empty You might need to slow it down so that you can allow the release in between. If you speed it up, you might start to notice that the pumping of the belly 
is actually making your contact firmer each time it happens. So you'll feel a bit more weight in your hands and hands and knees when you do it. Then empty all the way out. The emptying out will change your shape. And it shouldn't feel like you're pushing the ground away with your shoulders or your hips. Okay, then um, no, I've taken too long. So uh, we'll do that again. And this time at the end of it, I'd like you to simply move. Um, it means rolling your weight back over your feet as you stay resting on your hands. And uh, so we can see what it feels like to do, do the dog pose, having, achieved, have, having created this core support for you. So relax your weight completely, whatever weird shape that makes. Make sure your neck is relaxed, make sure your shoulders aren't pushing the ground away, make sure your uh, pelvis isn't pushing the ground away. Take a breath and as you let it go you can begin to pump. All the way out. And Take your weight over your hands, roll back over your feet, and breathe. And you should have found a very light way of getting into the posture. Now, when you're there, you may you might find that it's no longer light. So what you can do is try and avoid pushing the ground away with your arms or your legs. And uh, so maybe if your knees are locked, then you might want to stop doing that. Just have a sense of resting your weight down whatever weird shape that makes and then you begin again when it's all the way out you can sort of relax into what you're doing with the breath with the next arriving breath and it's released so I don't know if that was um, of any use for you, but um, it would have been a different experience. Yeah, if you like, you can go back to comparing a normal dog pose with uh, one that you prepared for with a bit of pranayama. It's still con a contrivance because I'm making you do artificial breathing. Uh, but but the thing is to notice if, if you can notice that when the breath itself the action of breathing itself and at the moment i'm only working with the exhale um is doing something to give your weight through your base to where you touch the ground so instead of your weight being heavy towards the ground but with with that action when you do that the action of exhaling will allow you to stay relaxed in the spine whilst being flexed and it transmits the weight that you are carrying in your belly to your knees and to your hand providing you don't hold your head up okay so that means your weight is on the ground so that when you move and just relax to breathe there should be no uh, well there's less weight to carry um, so, so the, the outcome is you have a different experience. Uh, the reality of it is you, you just want to get more involved with um, how the action of breathing relates to your ground. And that, that, and that, that can lead to a more natural experience. And um, so instead of um, the artifice of pulling your belly back, um, to breathe out in a in a at a pace that's not nothing to do with normal breathing you can just relax but as you breathe uh, as you release the breath see if the emptying of the belly and the chest can get your spine to move to neutral and then if breathing in makes you collapse again then the idea would be to See if you can set it up with the out breath by inviting the core and ribs to empty the breath and transmit the weight to your hands and knees. But instead of, um, well, when, when you let the breath come in, which is a relaxation on the inside, 
See if you can drop your weight into your hands, drop your weight into your knees in order to breathe. So that the action of breathing also relates to the support. And what will, if you manage that, and, that, that, and this, is a, this is something I talk about quite regularly on my yoga solutions, if you manage to do that, then what will happen is that the core responses, the, the belly muscles, the rib cage, will naturally work in order for you to breathe, rather than letting go of the support that they're offering you as you breathe. So just get waking the breathing gear up Finding a relationship to support is a very useful thing to do. But then when you breathe, if you have to let go of that support, then you're back to where you started. So there's a possibility of, before you breathe, make sure that the feeling of breathing is a release of weight and tension. But the weight needs to arrive on your hands and arrive on your knees. And the result of taking a breath then, if it's sourced in dropping your weight, these muscles work. You won't feel it too much. It won't be so obvious unless I gave you something more obvious to do. But it means you're, you're still supported as you breathe. So that when you release the breath, you get that potential to let go into what you're doing. Which is the other thing I was related to, and the other thing I was referring to earlier. <clears throat> but the, the the muscles that we need to develop, the the responses that we need to develop um, for our support that leaves us free in our joints and free in our spine. The, the, those muscles are, are related to your breathing gear. It, it's your rib cage and your core, and they work together easily when you're releasing the breath because they also do that job. They help support the emptying of the breath. And uh, the, the core and the ribs are working because you're giving your weight to your hands and knees. Right? That's, that's why they're working. Um, you're helping it along. You're helping activate it by pumping the breath out using muscles. But if it's a, an actual relationship, as in you are looking feeling supported as you let go of your weight into how you how where you touch the ground then quite naturally your core and your ribs will work in response to that without you having to do it without you having to artificially make it happen which is why if you can breathe what you're doing which is letting go of your weight into support when you release the breath you already have a structural relationship that surrenders the weight that you're carrying to the ground and leaves you free to move from the spine. Okay, so the experience is light. Anyway, I hope that was, um, yeah, that, that'll do for, for my uh, uh, three members and uh, followers on Facebook and YouTube and whatnot. I shall um, take it further for my premium members and uh, just, um, a little promo um my memberships are going up uh quite considerably <laughs> the day after tomorrow first of september I'm, I'm putting my prices up in in alignment with um the services that i'm offering and um the the very various tiers of membership you, you, and all of the memberships are so, uh, a very good value you know from from free membership up you get value so um go and sign up before the end of august so before i think thursday night midnight if you can if you sign up before then you'll look in the current price which is at least half price at least half price at the moment okay oh yes if, if you enjoyed the the this little experiment with the relevance of um the breath to physical practice then you will love one of my courses. It's called the Sacred Breath. It's um, it dives deeply into each of the each of the key pranayamas, the ones that I, I use mostly, um, that I have 
gone deep into and it uh, has two sections to it which you can access both of one of them is a is a full kind of workshop format to explore the nature of and the accuracy of the pranayama and then the other section is five ten minute guided practices so so you can um you know pick a pranayama a week and and uh, do it obsessively for, for that week with a bit of help from me you know um th that's available on, on my website you, you can buy any course uh, any course that that is up there is available for purchase if uh, that's something you're interested in go and check it out and look, go and look at the members area on my website okay so that'll do for now i shall love you and leave you and i shall see you same time same place next week much love now bye